Welcome to the Minecraft Player Protection Program. Get down and make as little noise as possible right now. Our purpose is to provide you with the foundations to survive. They can hear you. Clarification. I'm going to explain everything to you. To survive, we will need to pay attention to sounds. They love to see you in closed places, such as forests or caves. You may hear voices or laughter. Don't stay in a hidden place for too long either. Don't trust your environment. They can detect you. Be very careful when sleeping or opening doors. I'm looking for that player named Robert. They like sounds. It is better not to draw their attention so much. There is also a villager who knows a lot about those VHS tapes, but I don't know how to find him. There is also a player waiting for you, but you will see for yourself. He may be interested in those woods carved with blood. His name is Robert. See you later. Good luck. Take care. The Silence. A Minecraft horror mod that is extremely unforgiving and at all times will be testing your patience. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm serious. Towards the end, it, it just did not let me have fun. Come on, let me get up, let me get up, let me get up. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this mod is not for the weak, and I'm really not sure if it's a horror pack that you should be definitively making progress in like normal Minecraft and just trying to avoid the mod throughout the normal Minecraft experience, or if it's just supposed to be something scary that makes you go about the game differently to kind of have some fun, or to not have some fun, you, you know what I mean, because I didn't, I chose option one playing the game normally, and I, I paid the price for that multiple times, like a lot, and it had me kind of curious about that, which... Also, the other dimensions of this world, like the end and the nether, also kind of have me curious about whether or not this mod is supposed to be actually played or not, because they kind of break when it comes to like the two entities that will end your life. And there's really nothing you can do about them either. Like they can, <laughs> there's one that could just like, you'll see, you'll see. So going into the game, you get the normal Minecraft experience with the menus looking the same as vanilla Minecraft, so I created my world and loaded in. And this is where the first difference appears, when you load into the world you're greeted with this screen that gives you a long explanation about what's going on with the entities and what we're dealing with in this mod pack. Hey, okay, what's this? Welcome to the Minecraft Player Protection Program. Our purpose is to provide you with the foundations to survive. And I'm not gonna show it all to you, you kind of got some of it in the beginning anyways, so... It also mentions how to survive against these entities, and another player named Robert that I should be interested in, and a villager that might know some more about this world and what's going on in it. Also, I feel like this is going to be a pretty good time to mention that I am fully aware that my frame rate is not the best, and from time to time it might be a bit laggy. And that's just because I don't have the best computer, and when you're playing modded Minecraft and then stack recording on top of that, having a computer that I do, it makes it a little tight and doable, but a little hard sometimes. And that is something that I'm actively working on with having the money to do so, but I'm just trying to kind of get the parts around to build the PC and then get someone that actually knows what they're doing to build the PC. So yeah, that's coming soon. So I start off with just trying to get some wood to build a house so I have somewhere safe to stay and I go about this pretty slowly I will admit but you know just a nice little start. You know what we could do to make this look a little bit better actually. So I did this really quickly too because I'm pretty sure we're just all aware of the fact that the old programmer art or I mean I don't even it's just the old art style of Minecraft looks beautiful so yeah we're slapping that on. I always love me some good old programmer art though. Look at that. Look at it. That's beautiful. Dude, the trees are safe, bro. I'm making a house in the trees. They know what's up. I'll be the Lorax. Good base location would be down by the river. We will we will we will travel to the rivers. Alright, river person is successful. 
So I decided to make a base on this mushroom, and this is something I've never really tried before with a brown mushroom, even though I had done it a ton in red mushrooms, so I thought I'd give it a go, and in the end I ended up liking it a lot. I don't know how I'm going to build this base, but it's going to be built with love, detail, and care. Okay, so... Yeah, after that guy laughed at me, I kind of freaked out and immediately built my base and started worrying about some other things like coal and food later. But by then it was night and I didn't really want to risk going out and just dying. So I made some charcoal and decided to wait until morning. All right, all right, we got a little base going here, see? And while I was waiting, I got kind of bored and decided that an upstairs is something that this house is in desperate need of. So I started making it and realized that I don't really have the materials that I want to use for it. So I just gave up because I didn't want to go out at night and die because I, I, I really don't know how this mod works yet. Well, I didn't know how this mod works yet, and now knowing how it works, it would have probably killed me. I mean, I don't know for sure because so far I've actually gotten pretty lucky not even seeing it, but... Most likely it would have killed me. You know what though, if I want to have an upstairs, you kind of need to have a downstairs, right? So yeah, I thought a basement would be a good idea too, and I was thinking I'll have this tower with a big mushroom in the middle after the top floor and the bottom floor are done. Once morning came, I went out and got some resources to complete my upstairs and downstairs, and when I was in the middle of building, this happened. So, that, I'm sorry, that face that showed up initially scared the shit out of me, but it's kind of funny looking, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, really, I'm not? Oh. It did, it did, it did like my smart ass, bro, goddamn. Oh, bro, get your ass up. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What? No, seriously, what do you want me to do? What is the... What is the... What are the steps that I take after uh, seeing this? I went in my house, I went where I thought it was safe. I just got fucking... Obliterated. Do I need, like, a bed? Is this, like, a sanity thing? Home dog, why are you just tweaking? I don't feel safe. Yes. Bro! Stop it. Stop. Oh, he's got like the Enderman particles around him, so obviously he can just teleport wherever he wants. Oh! Oh! He goes based off of whether I'm looking at him or not! I'm dead. B oh, bro, was he just like emoting on me? That's not chill. That is not cool. Bro was just emoting on me. I eventually ended up getting back to my base and my stuff and tried to secure some of the things that I cared about a lot more and didn't want to despawn in a chest. You son of a bitch. Okay. My, my bad. I'll leave the door closed. So I'd also just like to say that this guy turns it to nighttime every single time he hits you with that little like spooky screen and it gets very annoying. Really? We don't need to do this again. Dog, what do you want? Here. No. Yo, someone translate that for me down in the comments. I'm gonna need that uh, that idea.
So after dealing with this guy for a bit longer, he went away for a while and gave me some time to actually get some of my house done, so I spent some time on that as being out in the open to build a base is pretty much impossible when he is around, so I'm trying to take advantage of this time that he's giving me and get some of this done as quick as possible. What's he gonna do once I have like full diamond armor? What's he gonna do then? Okay, I didn't I didn't mean it bro, I didn't mean it. Oh boy, chill out. Chill the fuck out. So now that I have a base, I'm going to start working on other things like mining and trying to make a farm, which the mining is going to come first because I'm going to need some iron to make a farm or to make it easier. And I'd also probably like to get some shears because I found some sheep a few times while I was out and about, but I never found more than like one or two. So I don't want to just kill them because I those are like the only sheep that I've found and I've tried to kind of like look for them and there's not that many around here. After mining and getting some iron, I found an axolotl while I was down there and decided to grab it and make a little aquarium for it up on the side of my room. And now that I have a bucket, I thought it would be a good idea to make a farm for myself because I went and got some food not too long ago, but it's running out now and I'm gonna need some more here soon. So while I was out getting some more food for myself while that wheat grew, I found this ruined portal and grabbed some of the items in it, and it had this golden sword with mending on it, so it lasted a really long time, and I ended up using it for a really long time. And I also killed some sheep that I found to get some wool, so that was convenient. Hey, I can tell the time now. I got a little clock going in my, in my little bed area. I can I can go to sleep now. This is the first time I've done this in this game. It's like, what, day two? I don't know if I believe that, but apparently it's day two now. It's been night like eight times, but only day twice. Even though, uh, uh, I don't... Shut up, dude. 
So after getting some food, I felt a little bit more confident about going down into the cave systems that I've found, and I got an axolotl, and I found some diamonds, conveniently three diamonds, so I was able to make a diamond pickaxe pretty quickly, with me probably only being about one or two hours into this mod pack. Open it up, slap them in there, close it up. Uh, I'll give I'll give everyone a little tour really quickly. So we have the I don't know what the fuck that was, but we have like the little upstairs with Pinky Dinky and Georgie. We have the first built floor on top of the mushroom with the farm outside. <laughs> a nice little thing. Can you not laugh over my my little tour? Damn. And we have the basement, the base of the mushroom. <laughs> Bro is really a hater. Like, goddamn. Some, uh, some chest. And then the mine. Now that my wheat farm has been growing for a while, I feel confident enough to go get some cows. So, first I make a little pen for them and start making them multiply. Which, if you're wondering how this thing works, it's basically just this little one by one hole with water and a hopper connected to a chest underneath it. So, once you breed them enough, there's a max capacity for how many animals can be in this one by one hole. So it starts killing them off after a while, and their loot will just go down into the hopper and right down to the chest below them, and it's very convenient. So those two cows are incompetent. These two cows, I... Oh, yeah, that's... Bro, that's exactly what I want to see. So I've actually had pretty good luck with this guy not messing with me outside of my base so far and the only times he's really killed me was either when I respawned and I was coming back to my base and he was just like camping it so there's nothing I'm really going to be able to do or I was in my house like I just said and he hit me through my walls which that's also just like what like what do you want me to do like dig a hole because at the time I didn't really think that would work I thought he would just be able to kill me and when he did kill me this time I was actually able to respawn back in my bed right next to him and I had a little confrontation with him. I'm honestly, like, still to this day, kind of confused on whether or not he actually takes damage or not, but I, I, I don't know, he's weird. When you hit him, he acts really weird. I also decided that it's about time to build an enchanting room because once I get enough leather from the cows, I'll be able to get right to building the shelves and I won't have to build the room for it then as well. After that I went mining and I found two more diamonds and I went to go get some obsidian for an enchanting table and I'm on the surface because I thought there was a pool of lava over here and I was just gonna like put a bucket of lava on it and turn it into some obsidian but found this instead which works.
I actually genuinely don't know if I've ever seen one this big before. This is crazy. This is big as fuck. What the hell? And cool. Like, don't get me wrong, but like... Uh... Oh, dude, Frostwalker? Wait a minute. Hold up. Dude, this is sick as hell. After looting the ruined portal and getting some of the obsidian, I went back and made my enchantment table and got right to farming my cows to get those bookshelves, and I ended up making this little safe house out there so I had somewhere safe to stay in between feeding them, because this, this guy was actually harassing me during this process. I got kind of bored of that after a while, and it made me think that I still haven't visited the nether, and I'm gonna need to do that soon, because at this point I only really need to find more diamonds for gear, and make the ender eyes in order to be pretty much good to go to beat the end. So I went out and found that original pool of lava that I was looking for, and got some more obsidian to make a nether portal. This looks pretty vibey. I'll fuck with it. And honestly, I wasn't wrong. Well, for now. But I was able to find another fortress with no real problem in about 10 to 15 minutes, so that was really nice. But the only problem came later down the line when I tried to come back and get blaze rods because I didn't while I was there. Well, I got like a couple, but I didn't get, you know, the amount that I would need. And the mod kind of breaks whenever I try to like go somewhere in the nether like the the guy like here let me just show you what happens Now, I do find a way around this, and it's really pretty simple. I kind of just mine down immediately, and I, that ends up working, and I kind of just had to make a tunnel all the way to where the nether fortress was, and it really wasn't that hard, but it was really annoying. Yeah, I, I feel like you could see how this is extremely annoying, and for a second, I genuinely thought like I wasn't going to be able to do anything about it. Once I got my stuff back and I wasn't so mad, I got enough materials around to make some bookshelves for level 30 enchants, so I set that up. What is that? What is that? Little PNG. <laughs> Fuck it. Slap a PNG in there. Okay. Interesting. Ooh, diamonds! Also, I'm not really sure if over the years the 
amount of diamonds that can be in a vein has changed because of like how deep the world is or whatever but you guys gotta see how big this vein was i'm pretty sure i got like 10 diamonds from this vein which is insane i've never gotten more than eight i'm pretty sure this is the biggest vein of diamonds i've ever found in my life and sadly i've played quite a bit of minecraft That kid, this is why you always mine out a little bit to see if there's extra. Always mine out a little bit to see if there's a- Holy fuck! I've never seen a diamond vein that big before. Oh my god, that was nine- Ten diamonds? That was ten diamonds. Holy shit. And I honestly thought that I would need fortune of some sort, one, two, or three, but I was getting really lucky with these diamonds and I ended up just not needing fortune at all. After mining for a while and getting about 21 diamonds, I realized that I never did anything when it comes to Robert or that villager that has info, so I decided I've progressed far enough to go out and look for some of these answers, but I never really found any, because I did find some villages, but never found the specific villager, and I never really heard or saw anything from Robert. So after a while of searching, I kind of just gave up on this and assumed that since it was such an early version of this mod that it wasn't really in the game yet. What was that, buddy? Hi. Little Gregory. Anyways, I ended up grabbing two cats from the villages and gave them a little spot up in my room and then started working on expanding my house because it's been needing an expansion for a while. It's pretty cramped in there. And while I was out, I got some stalactites as well which is another reason why I'm expanding, because I'm going to use them to make some infinite lava generators, and I'm going to need more room for that for sure. So basically the way this infinite lava generator works is you just put some lava above a dripstone and the dripstone drips lava into these cauldrons and the cauldron will actually collect lava after a while off of the dripstone and it will turn into a source block that you can take from with a bucket and then you can use the bucket as a fuel source. So it's pretty convenient. After that, I went mining and got some more diamonds while I was down there, and I was just enough to make a full set of diamond armor and a sword, so I did that and gave them a spot. Got my diamond armor ready when we're gonna need that.
Once I had gotten my tools and my armor for the Ender Dragon fight, I needed to go get the Ender Eyes, or I needed to go get some Blaze Rods for Blaze Powder so I can make the Ender Eyes and then go find the Stronghold. So I started working on that. So while I was out and about killing some Endermen to get some Ender Pearls, this happened to me. I just like to note that this is the first time I see this guy, and I'm pretty sure that he's supposed to be more common than this. What the fuck was that? Where am I? That looks like death, and I left. I should put my bed down. So, yeah, that was that, and it was whatever. I ended up trying to go get my stuff, and I just couldn't find it after that, so I just left it alone. It was only, like, two ender pearls that I really lost. Beyond that, I just had, like, iron stuff on me, so it was whatever. Um, and after this, I just went and used that, like, blue biome in the nether to go get ender eyes, even though it was a little hard because of, the, you know, the one guy, but, you know, I got through it. Once I got the ender pearls, I made some ender eyes and went and found that stronghold pretty quickly. So once I go home, I get all my gear around and enchant it, giving everything really low enchants, just the level 1 enchant, except my sword and my bow, which I need my bow to have a level 3 enchant, or level 30, however you want to like look at that, or infinity, which sadly that's all it gave me after I did that enchant, which I did that off camera because once I came home from the... F because once I came home from the stronghold, I went and just grinded out a bunch of levels and I stopped recording for that because I didn't want to just record me getting like, I was just mining for the levels pretty much. And I forgot to start recording once I went to start enchanting stuff. So I only really got this sword in and I actually enchanted the sword once and really needed to re-enchant it. And I'm giving it a level 30 enchant because just like, why not? And I'm back to level 30. Let's see. I mean, alright, that's chill. I'll, I'll make some sharpness books and put it on it. So after that, I gather up all of my stuff that I've been slowly preparing for this Ender Dragon fight over the past, you know, 10, 20 days in this Minecraft world. And I... Let me let me just show you the loadout really quickly. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's the here's the loadout. Pretty simple. Um, You know, we got the bow, got infinity on it. Everything else beyond that is just bare bones. The diamond sword. Uh, This is pretty much the only thing I really dumped some levels into i got that fire aspect i'm breaking three the sharpness i would like to either be four or four would be where i would want it but you know it is what it is uh we got the prot two diamond helmet unbreaking one prot two prot one the projectile protection two you know i i would also like feather falling on that but i just could not get any feather falling books i'm just not gonna like, it's not that big of a deal so I mean, it might be. I'm probably going to say that and then end up getting boosted up really high and dying from that, but we'll see. Um, I need to go get a bed, but then you got the three golden apples. I'm pretty much just going to use those, like, totems, where, I mean, obviously, I can't use them exactly like totems, or like, you know, it'll actually be a safeguard, but obviously, I'm just going to use them when I get low. I mean, I feel like that's also pretty obvious. Got the ender pearl, just in case I get thrown off. I got the one little... You know, this would be like my one thing that I know I have. I don't have to like kill an Enderman to get one. So I can, you know, curl back up. So I ended up making my way to the end portal. And when I got to the end, I ran into a bit of a problem. Because that one guy from earlier that like sends you to another dimension kept doing that to me when I tried to go in there. And I kept going back to the end, which it was not a very short distance, by the way. And I, I went back there like two or three times and he kept doing the exact same thing to me over and over and over again, sending me like almost completely back to spawn with him letting me keep my stuff at least, but not letting me do what I needed to do in the end in order to make any type of progress at all. 
So I think this mod is just in too early of a version to actually beat. So maybe in the future I'll come back to it. But anyways, for now, that was the video. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you, uh, if you'd like... If you'd like to see more from me, uh, you know where to let me know. Anyways, see ya.